and uh, hopefully some more people will join, but uh, we have enough to, uh, to go ahead and get started. So um, uh, we do these, these meetings, you know, uh, every month, generally the third Thursday of the month. Uh, the whole past year, uh, since the pandemic, we've been doing them uh, online. Uh, hopefully we're gonna be meeting in, uh, in person pretty soon. Uh, I'm gonna start reaching out to uh, uh, some of my contacts about uh, having in-person meetings again. Um, but obviously we're waiting basically for the all clear, you know, uh, when the, the companies that will host us, you know, feel safe to have people in public spaces again. So what town do you usually have meetings? I'm sorry? What part of town? You usually have the meetings. Uh, so last year and uh, the year before, we were meeting uh, off of uh, Gate Parkway at um, Avail uh, Availity, oh. and um, they have a nice uh, place. So they host. They were hosting a couple different user groups there, uh, and then uh, once the uh, pandemic came down, their uh, corporate headquarters said mm, no more public meetings and stuff like that. So. Uh, they're waiting for, I think the, the company policy is they're waiting for CDC guidance uh, before uh, they can start inviting people from the public back into the, uh, into the company. So. It would be nice if you could maybe somehow do like a hybrid, like if, if so if you can't make it to the actual location, you could still join on Zoom. Maybe I don't know, that's a good guess. So that's actually the plan. So one of the things that's really nice about the way availability set up is uh, they actually uh, they were actually the first company that I knew that was using Zoom, like, like kind of across the board. And their conference rooms all set up with like Zoom and Zoom cameras. And uh, they're already set up for Zoom. So since they're already doing Zoom, uh, that makes it a lot easier to do a hybrid approach where you can have some people in person and you can also, uh, you know, do it remotely as well. And so my plan is, because I, I figure even once we start meeting in person in person again, uh, that people are going to be, you know, uh, reluctant to, you know, go into, you know, public spaces for, for a while. And so my plan is to do a hybrid approach so that the people that, uh, uh, you know, want to do it from, from home can still do it from home. And then the people that want to meet in person and stuff, we can, we can meet in person. That would be great. Yep. So uh, this presentation is kind of based off of the original presentation I did uh, a couple of years ago on, uh, on Gatsby. And to kind of summarize, you know, when it comes to hosting, there's essentially, there's, you know, uh, really a, a number of different ways that you can host uh, websites. And the way I got started was, uh, you know, I just had HTML, some images, uh, I had a, uh, a web account where I could FTP, you know, my HTML files and my GIFs and my JPEGs and stuff like that up to uh, uh, up to an FTP account, and then it was hosted in the web. There's a lot of people uh, that still, you know, that's the way they host their their websites and stuff like that. Uh, one of the things that's become really popular, I'd say, probably in the last uh, ten or fifteen years, has been uh, content management systems, and there's a lot of them. And uh, the one uh, in particular I'm going to be talking about tonight um, is WordPress, but uh, there's one that's also very popular in the Gatsby uh, community called Contentful. Uh, but CMSs are, you know, another way that we people are publishing, uh, you know, websites. Another way is just through a regular web application, like maybe an ASP.NET application or a Node.js application. Um, and as a matter of fact, the jacksnode.com website, uh, the website for, for this group is running on an express server uh, and on Heroku. So, you know, that's another way that, you know, uh, some publicly facing websites and stuff are set up. And then there's kind of what we're gonna be talking about tonight, which is site generators. So I just thought it'd be fun to kind of go back and take a look at uh, uh, my website. This is from literally 19 years ago. Uh, and this one actually I used cold fusion. Uh, so I was using cold fusion at this point and a SQL server backend. Um, but you know, this is how, uh, I was doing my, my website, you know, two decades ago. 
And so, you know, the, some of the pros and cons of just doing a, an HTML site is that, you know, obviously you don't need to have a server to render things out. Uh, it's very simple hosting, uh, very inexpensive hosting. Uh, you obviously have very fine control over the HTML and CSS because you're actually, you know, uh, most likely you're going to be writing it yourself. Uh, cons to that is it's kind of cumbersome, especially if you want to reuse uh, layouts. Uh, and there's no, you know, uh, you know, there's no built-in way for for doing uh, minifying, uglifying, uh, you know, CSS and uh, uh, HTML uh, content. So there's, you definitely can set, get that set up um, using Webpack or something like that. But uh, I think nowadays we're all kind of used to tools and stuff that kind of automate that stuff for us. Um, so for the content management systems, uh, there's some that are, you know, pre-built web applications for publishing, you know, websites, uh, you know, um, uh, WordPress is a perfect example of that Joomla, these are perfect examples because uh, it's all open source software. You can, uh, you know, you can lease a server or you can actually use uh, uh, services and stuff that already have it set up. There's already a, a, a bunch of hosted services uh, for, for doing content management systems. And, uh, you know, you don't really need to have a web developer to publish a website now. So, it, you know, uh, there's a number of different, you know, uh, companies like Wix and web.com is an example where they just have like this admin you, you log into and you can kind of like, they have like these WYSIWYG tools and stuff for, you know, how you want your website to look. And so a lot of this stuff has been made uh, a lot easier. Uh, so some of the open source CMS software, you know, we were talking about WordPress, Drupal is another, another example of one, Joomla is a very popular one. I don't think Contentful is uh, open source, but like I was saying before, it's a very popular CMS system. So some of the pros and cons with using a CMS, uh, and I can kind of speak this a little bit because uh, we use WordPress at my company as, as an example. Uh, so you can use pre-existing themes. That's one of the things that's really nice about WordPress is there's all this stuff out there already that you can use that's pre-built. Um, you know, uh, the content can be created by non-web developers. Uh, you can set up permissions for, you know, certain content. So, you know, certain users have access to do certain things. So uh, it has a lot of flexibility like that. Sometimes it can be, you know, inflexible. Um, uh, you really requires having a backing database, uh, which may be an issue for, for some people. Um, requires an app server or servers. Uh, and one of the things you have to worry about this approach is what I call the uh, slash dot effect. And that's essentially, it's like what happens if you have some content or something that somebody's trying to get to that's very popular and you're hosting it yourself. Maybe you've leased a server and you're, you know, you're running your, uh, your WordPress site on your server and stuff like that. And then you get, you know, 100,000, you know, hits in, a, in an hour and stuff like that. Well, that could potentially bring down the, uh, the site. So uh, that's one of the, the, the cons with, uh, with using that, that kind of approach. Uh, web applications. So, uh, you know, this is obviously a lot more fine grained, you know, you can use uh, one of the many frameworks out there like Express or Hoppy or Next.js uh, for building out your, your web application. Uh, you can use the platform of your choice. It doesn't have to be Express or Hoppy. Uh, but once again, this requires a live application server and there's generally higher costs associated with doing this type of hosting. So this is an example, uh, you know, this is obviously, this is not too bad, but like uh, the Jackson website I'm hosting on Heroku and that's like $7 a month. So that's not that bad, but uh, Heroku has, you know, scalability features in there. So if you need to scale out your container, uh, you can do that, you know, fairly easy with, uh, with their software, but it's also, uh, uh, it, can get, get, it can start to get expensive as you start scaling stuff out. And that brings us to static site generators. And so static site generators are, you know, just generally, you know, uh, scripts or applications that will let you take uh, site templates and themes. Uh, they're very popular in the Ruby and the Node.js uh, community. Um, 
you know, you can, uh, the sites get deployed as a static site, uh, as just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And um, there's a build process involved that actually compiles the, the HTML. Um, and it, you can deploy anywhere that hosts a static site, but, you know, uh, a lot of people, you know, they're you know, deploying to, you know, uh, Amazon Web Services S3. Uh, you can also use GitHub pages. Uh, I have a number of different sites I just have de deployed out on Netlify. So there's a lot of different options for, for doing hosting. Uh, and they're either very low cost or free, uh, depending on what you're doing uh, with, your, with your hosting. And then uh, uh, Gatsby itself, uh, they introduced their own Gatsby Cloud. So you can actually host now with, with Gatsby. So that's another option. So some of the currently, some of the current popular uh, static site generators, uh, I've used Jekyll myself. Jekyll is very popular. Uh, it comes uh, built into uh, GitHub. So if you want to host your website on GitHub, you can actually do that uh, using uh, Jekyll. Uh, Octopress is also a popular one. Uh, Middleman is also popular. And then the Node.js side, um, uh, Metalsmith is one of the more popular uh, uh, static site generators. Uh, Metalsmith uh, is interesting. That's actually the uh, generator that the uh, Node.js Foundation uses for hosting the uh, Node.js website. Um, there's also Hugo, uh, Nux.js, uh, Gatsby, which we're gonna be talking about tonight. and. Uh, this is one I haven't looked at. This is a fairly new one. This is uh, ViewPress, which is the uh, Vue.js, uh, you know, static site generator. So you can actually build or design your uh, your website using Vue now. And uh, so that's one that we'll probably be taking a look at in the future as well. So what are some of the pros and cons of uh, static site generators? Um, so. The pros, obviously, you can host it very cheaply. Um, you know, there's, these are static sites; they're a lot easier to deploy. Uh, there's no database that's required, at least not on the uh, on the front end. Um, you can create content, uh, basically just in HTML or Markdown, uh, which keeps things simple. Uh, you can publish with existing CMSs, like uh, we're going to be. I'm going to be doing a demo tonight where I actually use WordPress to. Uh, uh, for the content, and then we do. Uh, uh, we're going to use uh, uh, Gatsby to actually do the the front end, and then uh, you know, obviously, using this approach, you're less susceptible to the slash dot effect. Uh, you can use Git as your source of truth, which I like a lot. Uh, and then uh, the cons would be here that you know, it's like, well, if you're doing a static site, then you know. Uh, you're not going to have like uh, the you know server interactivity that you'd have like if you're hosting an Express site or a Next.js site, but uh, you know you get the benefits of uh, you know being able to use stuff like Amazon S3, and this is the way a lot of websites are hosted now. They just they're hosting the static content, uh, and then they may have callbacks that get made into uh, into some type of you know backing uh, server technology, but. Uh, this is, uh, I think this is the, this is the most bulletproof way of uh, hosting, uh, you know, the average, you know, website. So I want to talk uh, about Jekyll real quick, uh, just because uh, it's, this is one that I've also used. Um, you can build pages in uh, HTML or Markdown, which is quite nice. And uh, yeah. question? Okay, uh, so uh, they have a templating engine that's called Liquid, um, and uh, which is actually a, that's been pretty popular. Um, and like I was saying before, is like GitHub Pages. Like if you're using GitHub Pages, which is the you know the you know the static publishing side of you know a GitHub repo, uh, this is built into GitHub. So for instance, if you just wanted to host something with your GitHub repo. Uh, they've made that pretty easy to do. There's a branch you can set up uh, in. Um, uh, there's a branch you can set up uh, in, uh, in, on, in your GitHub repo where you can uh, uh, publish static content. 
which brings us to GatsbyJS. Uh, so GatsbyJS, obviously, uh, one of the things that's pretty nice about this is it's uh, is built using React, and uh, and so I think uh, developers are uh, uh, kind of like this because it's a uh, uh, it's very popular. I'm going to pause just for for one second. One second. All right, so um, this is a serverless uh, type of technology. It's uh, very extensible through through plugins. That's one of the things I like about it a lot is that it's uh, um, uh, it's very easy to you know add features very quickly um, because of the, the plugin architecture. Um, something else that's also nice about it is that. Uh, uh, they have a offline access component. So for instance, like if you have a website or whatever, and uh, you want it to, let's say, uh, have it, you know, be available uh, when somebody's not connected to the internet, they have, uh, they have a way that you can do that. Um, you can also, you know, build your pages either using React or uh, Markdown. Um, and so that's something I also like about it because uh, I've used Markdown before, um, and then they have a, a, uh, their own uh, kind of like flavor of Markdown where you can actually incorporate uh, components called uh, MDX. So you can create a component uh, that you've done uh, in React and then use that in your markup. So it's actually pretty nice. And they've done a lot of pretty amazing things with, uh, with uh, how they handle images and doing uh, progressive image loading. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, one of the new plugins they have tonight that uh, does some, some pretty cool stuff with, uh, with images. So uh, React, if you're not familiar with React already, it's a, it's a SPA or single page application framework. Uh, Next.js is also uh, a React based uh, framework. Um, if you've ever used React Native or are familiar with React Native, it's the framework behind uh, doing a React Native mobile applications. And of course, obviously, uh, Gatsby. Uh, Gatsby is a React-based uh, framework. So uh, getting started, uh, the only two tools you really need to have are uh, Node and Git. Um, and then um, to install the, the CLI, uh, you can do that using just doing an npm install uh, dash g for global uh, with the Gatsby CLI. And one way you can do it uh, of creating or ginning out like a new site is you can just say Gatsby new and then whatever your site name is. But they also have this option here of being able to use pre-used uh, templates, and which is really handy. So if you're looking to see like, okay, how can I get started with a site that's also a blog and it also does this and stuff like that, uh, they have these different templates and stuff that you can use that kind of give you the extra leg up when you're getting started with Gatsby. Um, and then to, you know, run it, uh, use Gatsby develop to, uh, to actually run their, uh, uh, their real time uh, or development time server that uh, can, has a hot reloading built into it. So you can make changes and then see the changes in real time. Uh, you can also just build out the uh, static content using the Gatsby build command. And then if you want to serve it and see what it looks like uh, locally, you can do Gatsby serve uh, uh, for, for doing that. Uh, and the structure of your Gatsby sites is there's generally there's a folder that's a public folder where any, you know, uh, content and stuff that you want to make uh, available to the public, you just put in that folder. Uh, you put all of your source into a, a source folder and then inside that folder uh, there's like a pages folder. Uh, it's very common for people to use like a components folder inside the source folder for storing their React components. Um, and that's, that's nice because now you can share your components uh, with, uh, with your Gatsby projects. Um, there's a file called a Gatsby-config and that's exactly what it sounds like. It's the configuration where you kind of configure uh, uh, different things that you want to have set up as far as like site metadata and, uh, and plugins, that sort of thing. Uh, there's a Gatsby node, which is, this is uh, how you kind of hook in functionality uh, using Node.js for doing things like uh, writing out like uh, uh, pages and stuff like that based off of content that you, you may be pulling from, uh, from let's say a, a, a GraphQL source. 
Uh, they also have a gatsby-browser.js where you can load up uh, some CSS or global CSS, that sort of thing for, for your site. And then being that's a node application, there's also a package.json file. So if you want to build out a page, it's pretty simple. Uh, all you have to do is, you know, import, you know, React from React. And in this case, we have a, uh, a, an export that we're doing on a function that's just returning back a, a div of hello world. So that's probably the simplest, uh, simplest uh, Gatsby uh, site. Um, there's no router that comes uh, as part of the uh, uh, comes as part of this. Um, so if you're familiar with uh, you know React, you know single page applications, uh, there's React Router, which is very popular. Uh, with Gatsby, they have uh, some of their own tools. Um, one of the things they use here is uh, the link object, uh, which is a Gatsby library. And so, for instance, if you want to link to a page, it's a, say a contact page. You can just say like well, I have here link to, and then you pay, uh, basically put in the resource you're trying to get to, and then uh, just like you would inside of an a ref uh, or a h ref tag, you can put in the uh, label that you want to use for that for that link. Uh, and here's an example of us uh, using uh, the link inside of uh, the page. So we're uh, uh, doing an export here, uh, and then inside of this uh, div tag, which is our page. Uh, we have a link to the contact, uh, and then um, you know the user would be able to click on that and uh, go on to the next page. So uh, one of the things I was uh, still blown away by with Gatsby is uh, all the different ways that you can style your your content. So they support regular CSS off the bat, but they also support CSS modules. Uh, they have SAS plugins, uh, they have CSS and JavaScript, they have style components. So whatever flavor of uh, style sheet that you want to use, uh, it's pretty much supported with, uh, with Gatsby. Uh, I'm just a, an old fashioned regular CSS kind of guy. Uh, so the examples and stuff I have tonight are all based off of uh, regular CSS. Um, the other really, I think, uh, killer feature Gatsby is uh, the, the data feature. And so um, they have a, uh, for the build and for the development process, they have a GraphQL server that's built into it. And then you have these different source programs or source plugins that you can use for pulling in data. So there's one for WordPress, like we were talking about earlier. Uh, if you want to just pull from CSVs, if you want to write your own, uh, you can do that. Um, and then you can query that data directly inside of your, your pages. And uh, you can also query the data inside of components using the uh, static query uh, uh, component. Whoops. All right. So here's an example of a page where we're using GraphQL. And this example here, uh, we're just, we just have a parameter that is using a destructor to get the data back. Uh, we're taking some site metadata and printing it out. And then in the query here, uh, we're just querying the, uh, uh, the site metadata with the description and then uh, outputting it. So that's kind of like a very simple example of using GraphQL. And I'll have some, some more examples of this uh, in a little bit. So uh, if you're not familiar with GraphQL, uh, GraphQL, uh, you can uh, define queries here uh, using a very similar to a JSON type format, but one where you can also pass parameters in. And so in this case, uh, we're using the markdown remark, uh, and then it's looking for an ID that equals, you know, this, uh, this GUID right here. And then so in theory, this would just pull back that one record, but you can also have the option here to parameterize it. So in your query, you can set up a parameter and then you can pass that parameter into the query. So uh, it has a lot of flexibility uh, as far as uh, being able to uh, dynamically retrieve the information you need. So there's two types of uh, plugins that you can use inside of uh, Gatsby. Uh, there's source plugins, what we were talking about before. So for instance, if you want to feed data into, uh, into Gatsby, you would use a source plugin or write a source plugin to do that. There's also transformer plugins. And transformers, uh, essentially what they do is they take your 
uh, your data and they let you transform it. Uh, and so um, uh, those are also very handy as well. And they all can be just installed using, you know, NPM or, um, or one of the other different package managers that's available. Um, and then uh, you just configure that, you set that up using the uh, Gatsby config file. Uh, Markdown is a, just a shorthand for HTML. This is very popular with uh, bloggers and writers. Uh, the thing that's nice about it is that, you know, it's essentially, you know, you just kind of write your, your content out like if it was just a text file. And then uh, just by using some very simple, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, characters and uh, uh, it's smart enough to go through and format that into HTML for you. It was invented by uh, John Gruber. Uh, and, you know, GitHub, it's just, this is the, you know, kind of the default uh, text formatter that it uses. And um, so uh, it's used in combination uh, with uh, front matter, um, which is uh, essentially kind of like a, uh, a header that you can put into your, uh, into your markdown files where you can basically put meta information about that content uh, into the, uh, the markdown file. So this is an example, this is, uh, of, let's say a blog post here where, uh, somebody's put a title here into the post and they have a, a date in here. So this is the front adder right here, the part that's in between these, uh, uh, these three dashes. And then, uh, if you want to do an H1 tag, as an example, you just put the pound sign in front of that line and I'll put everything in that line inside of, uh, inside of a H1 tag. Uh, if you just leave uh, like a paragraph like this, you know, all by itself, you'll put it inside of a P tag. Uh, if you want to do bullet points, all you have to do is put an asterisk at the beginning of the line. So you can see this is very simple, very straightforward way of marking up your, your syntax. Uh, and then if you need to put like a link as an example, uh, you just put uh, whatever the label is in, uh, inside of square brackets and inside of uh, your curly, or your parentheses, you put in uh, the link that you wanna, you wanna go to. And then you also have the capability of just putting regular HTML. So if you have something that you just can't do with Markdown, but you wanna have that HTML inside of the page, you can just put regular HTML uh, into, your, into your Markdown as well, which is also a nice flexible, flexible feature. So uh, I like this a lot. This is how uh, I author posts and stuff like that on my, on my website. Hosting. Uh, so like I was saying before, there's lots of many uh, inexpensive options for, uh, for doing this. Um, you know, you can, obviously you can use GitHub pages and the way that works is that there's a branch you can create uh, in your repo called gh-pages. And then you just put your content inside of that, that branch. Um, and if you are using, let's say, if you create a repo that's based off of your username.github.io, then the master branch will just display that out as, uh, as content. Um, you can also, like I said before, you can use Amazon S3. Uh, Amazon S3 is nice because it just kind of works as like storage. So you can upload your content to an S3 bucket and then you can point a, uh, uh, let's say a domain inside of uh, AWS to that bucket and it'll just host that as, as a website. Uh, I'm currently using Netlify a lot. Netlify is very nice because it has an integration with, uh, with GitHub and then it recognizes Gatsby sites right off the bat. So it's able to uh, just automatically do the build process. There's no special setup or anything like that that you have to do in order to, to use Netlify with Gatsby. And then as I said before, uh, Gatsby has their own hosting as well. Uh, I'd like to add this one in here because uh, every once in a while I run across a friend of mine who's uh, also, you know, uh, uploading, you know, content to websites and stuff like that. And uh, uh, every once in a while I come across somebody that's still using FTP. Uh, don't use FTP. Um, this uh, Scott Hansman from Microsoft likes to say, you know, Git is the FTP for code. And so uh, there's so many different ways now that you can integrate a repo that you have with, you know, server with uh, CI/CD processes. There's no reason to, to ever use FTP. So, 
one thing I'm going to be doing tonight is I'm going to be demoing uh, the Gatsby WordPress integration. And uh, the way I like to look at this is this is almost kind of like the best of both worlds because uh, I know some people um, that, you know, they, they use WordPress. And one of the reasons why they use WordPress is that it's very easy for somebody that's a, uh, maybe a knowledge user, but a non-technical user, somebody that's not familiar with like how to craft HTML but you know they know like if I need to make something like a, a subhead or something like that, I could put a couple you know pound signs in front of it. Um, Gatsby, you know, gives you all of the the benefit. I'm sorry, uh, WordPress gives you all the benefits and stuff like that of you know a content management system. But then if you want to do the front end, let's say using Gatsby, uh, you can set up a build process with webhooks as an example where you kick off a build process every time somebody, let's say, posts new content or something like that into your WordPress site. And the term that I hear people using quite a bit now is called headless WordPress. And so what a lot of uh, companies and organizations are doing now is that they're writing their content, they're creating their content using WordPress, but then the actual hosting, they have a build process set up that actually uses Gatsby to take the WordPress content essentially build it into a static you know, website and then deploy that out to uh, static hosting. And so that's pretty nice because that kind of gives you the best of both worlds. You get the advantage of being able to use a, uh, a content management system, but then you get the, uh, you also get the, the ability to have the fine grain control over you know, exactly how your website looks and executes. Um, you can use you know, Webpack and all these other things that are built into the Gatsby. And so this is considered to be the, the I think the, the best of both worlds for people that are operating in that type of environment. Um, in order to get that to work with, uh, with that WordPress, there's two plugins that you have to install uh, in order to use this. Uh, one's called WP uh, GraphQL, which it just essentially adds, um, uh, you know, a GraphQL component to your uh, to your WordPress site, and then there's another one called WP Gatsby, and WP Gatsby essentially does a, a kind of a shaping of that GraphQL content. So you have to have these two plugins uh, installed uh, in order to uh, use this with uh, Gatsby. And then, in Gatsby itself, uh, Gatsby actually has a plugin you use for for pulling in WordPress uh, WordPress content. And I'm going to demo what that looks like tonight. So one thing that I also want to kind of cover is uh, upgrading from older versions of Gatsby to Gatsby 3.0. And uh, the way you do this is actually it's it's not that difficult. Um, uh, you just make sure you you're upgrading to the latest version of Gatsby, and then. Uh, uh, if you use the dash dash save when you're installing the latest version of the Gatsby um, a module, you can also run npm outdated. And what that'll do is that will show you uh, essentially what are the current versions of uh, modules you're using. Because there's all these you know uh, sub modules and stuff that you're, you're going to use uh, with a Gatsby site, like uh, Gatsby image plugin is an example of one. Um, and what this will do is this will go and show you, okay, uh, if you want to get these updated, this will show you what version you need in your package date JSON. And then you can use that to, uh, uh, to very easily kind of upgrade the modules and stuff you need to have to use Gatsby 3.0. Um, there's a couple of things that uh, are not backwards compatible. So for instance, like uh, uh, one of the sites I had, I was using Navigate 2. Uh, which is a, a function uh, you can bring in from a module. And uh, now it's just navigate. So you don't have to use navigate to anymore. Um, if you're using a module uh, CSS as an example, uh, the way that you previously imported that in is you just import, you name your, your uh, the style that you want to use for, for your module uh, from that CSS. Uh, that won't work anymore. Now you have to uh, do an import, you know, star as module style. That's actually, I need to correct that here in this slide. Uh, so you do import asterisk as module style from module.css. Uh, 
the Gatsby that Node.js does not include GraphQL by default anymore. So you have to uh, uh, import that in manually. And, um, and then if you're gonna be using Gatsby 3, it requires a minimum version of Node uh, 12.13. And that could be an issue if you're using Netlify, for example, because it uses Node version 10. So uh, there's a way uh, by default it uses Node 10. So um, there's a pretty simple way of being able to uh, tell Netlify if you're using Netlify to use a newer version of, uh, of Node uh, for doing your Gatsby builds. Uh, the Gatsby plugin image uh, is a new plugin uh, that was recently added uh, to Gatsby. And uh, it does a couple of things. It changes, uh, there's a lot of like GraphQL functionality and stuff that's built in for uh, you know, looking up images and being able to reference images. Um, so uh, there's a new uh, property that you'll see uh, on the, let's say if you're using uh, Image Sharp as an example, it's called Gatsby Image Data. Uh, there's new static image and Gatsby image components that you can use for, for displaying you know, your images. And uh, these default to the correct aspect ratio by default, which is kind of nice. Um, fluid images, if you're using fluid, fluid images in previous versions of Gatsby, um, I think they still do exist, but I think they've been deprecated. And so you definitely want to move away from, from using those. And then uh, they're supporting WebP now, which is pretty nice. Uh, so what they do is, you know, they do that inside of a picture tag. And so they can use an image, a regular old fashioned image source as a child tag inside that picture tag. But if you're using a browser that supports WebP, uh, then you get this functionality as well. So this is all pretty, pretty nice. So to install this, uh, uh, if you want to use Gatsby plugin image, you have to uh, install Gatsby plugin sharp and also uh, transformer sharp. Um, and then once you have those plugins in here, you can you can start using Gatsby uh, Gatsby plugin. Something else they did, I think, is quite nice is uh, they've offered code mods. And think of code mods as being a way that you can automatically refactor your code. To take advantage of some of these new features. So they have a code mod, as a matter of fact, that you can use with uh, Gatsby image plugin. And what it'll do is it'll actually will go through and rewrite your code to use the, the newer syntax or the newer uh, components and stuff that you would use. Um, I've tried this a couple different times. It's worked every single time that I've tried to do it. Um, and the way you use this is you use the MPX command uh, Gatsby dash code mods. And then in this case with the Gatsby plugin image, you would just do that and it would run. Uh, I would make sure that you do that in a, uh, a new branch. I wouldn't do that in your, your release or master branch, uh, just in case it does screw something up. But uh, uh, this is actually a pretty nice uh, utility uh, they have as part of uh, Gatsby. So with that, let me go ahead and start doing a, uh, a quick demo. And the first thing I want to do here is I want to open up a uh, gist that I have. And let's go to my gists. And I'm going to come to this one right here. So I have a website here. Uh, that I do for uh, local uh, Craig Airport Pilots Association as an example. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna open this up inside of uh, Visual, uh, Visual Studio Code. And so you can see this is the, uh, this is the site. Um, and I'm gonna actually pull the site up here so we can, so we can see what it looks like. So this is our uh, this is our website. Uh, see, I haven't updated it in a while, <laughs> but uh, uh, this is the site, and uh, we have a couple of different things on here. Um, we have resources that the pilots can use. Uh, we also have a little weather widget here, so we can get the aviation weather, uh, which is kind of nice. But this is using this is using Gatsby 2.0, and you see we've just got a weather update there. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the process of actually upgrading this to Gatsby 3.0. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna run npm install Gatsby latest. And I'm gonna do the same. Before I do that, I'm actually gonna create this, I'm gonna create a new branch. So let me go ahead and create a new branch. I'm gonna call this, uh, we'll call this, uh, gets me re upgrade. There we go. So now we switch to that branch. Now I can say npm install that's be latest. And we will save that. And while that's running here, um, uh, the next command that I run after doing this is uh, the npm outdated, which would show me, give me a table, basically which plugins I, I need to, to upgrade in here. So I'm going to go ahead and come here to I package that JSON here. And this is the, uh, these are all the different modules, all the different dependencies I have here inside of this, uh, this project of JSON file. And you can see I'm using uh, React Helmet. I'm using uh, Plugin Sharp, uh, copy linked files, remark images, uh, the source file system, which lets you uh, use Gatsby, or sorry, use GraphQL to, uh, uh, to actually import in uh, or do a GraphQL query on uh, files inside the file system. And then there's also Remark, which you can use for uh, markdown content and uh, Transformer Sharp for Sharp-based images. And that is still going. We'll let it go. We're getting pretty close here. And it should be installing uh, Sharp. So if you're not familiar with uh, Sharp, the Sharp module uh, for Node, this is really fast, really nice uh, uh, image processing uh, module. And one of the reasons why it's so fast is it's completely written natively for whatever processor you're running on. So I'm running a x86 processor and it's literally, it's just compiling uh, this module for, for that processor here. And that's the last part of this, uh, this install, but it's really fast. Um, and uh, it's, it's one of the, I think one of the nicest features of Gatsby is that they, they, use, uh, they use Image Sharp. So I think that's finishing up. All right, so now that's done. Uh, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna run NPM outdated. And this is what's giving me the table. It shows, okay, well here, you know, using Axios 18.1, but the latest version is 21.1, uh, Gatsby image, uh, all these different things, they all have upgrades. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back over here to this gist I had up just before. And I'm just gonna copy all this stuff out of here just to speed things up rather than go through and put that stuff in one by one. All right, and I'm just going to paste that in here. Now I have that in here. So now if I want to go and run this, try running this, I'm going to do Gatsby. And I'm going to say Gatsby develop. And that will try to do a, uh, a quick development build and host a web server that we can use for, for testing it. But we should see some errors here. I'm hoping we'll see some errors here. Okay. So there's some things in here it's not liking. Uh, but look, I went ahead and hosted it. It's kind of weird. Let me try pulling that up. So let's do localhost 8000.
All right, so we're seeing a bunch of errors here. And it looks like it's having to do with uh, the way that we're importing in this, uh, some of these, uh, these modules in here. So let's, let's see if we can't fix that here real quick. So we look right here, we can see that we have this uh, footer. And this is what I was talking about before, where this is kind of the old way of importing in a module. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, add the asterisk as, so it just knows to import everything in there from the CSS. I'm going to do the same thing for, for the he header here. Uh, the nav bar. Yep. And there's also this normal header here. And that looks like, let's try compiling that again. Ah, got a failure again. There's something in there it's not liking. It's looking like the post CSS. It's kind of blowing up on the post CSS here. So I'm not exactly sure uh, what's causing that. I've done this before and I didn't run in, into this problem before. It may have to do with uh, the cache. So rather than try to do a live debug on this, I I'm gonna go on to the next part of the demo. If you guys don't mind. And then I'll add a, a little addendum here uh, after we, we do the meeting. Uh, to, to show how I fix this. But I think what I may have to do is uh, 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 add some post CSS uh, because some of the uh, plugins I'm using are using post CSS. So I may have to add some, some modules for that. So let me go ahead and kill that. And I'm gonna come out of here and I'm gonna show what the process is like of actually ginning out a new Gatsby site. So if you wanna gin a new Gatsby site, the way you could do that is you can say npm and that we could also do Gatsby new and then whatever our site name is, but you can also say npm init Gatsby. And this gives us a couple of questions here. What do we name our site? Well, let's just call this the Jack's node site. And then it gives us the project name here. And then they give us a little, uh, uh, chooser here where we can choose uh, if I want to use a different content uh, management system. So for this example here, uh, I'm not going to use anyone, but you can see here where they have WordPress, Contentful, Shopify, Netlify, CMS are all in here. And then it gives you the option of different styled uh, components that uh, you might want to might want to use. So I'm just going to use the regular CSS for this. And then they give you some options of some things you, you might want to uh, have uh, for, your, for your site. So they give you the ability here to uh, build and host for free on Gatsby Cloud. Uh, I'm not planning on deploying this, so I won't bother with that. Uh, I do want to have responsive images. Uh, I'm not going to worry about Google Analytics. Um, I'm not going to add page meta tags for this, but I may want to have an automatic sitemap. Uh, I want to generate a manifest file and I want to add markdown support. And I'm going to go ahead and done. And this should go ahead and install a new Gatsby site for us.
and that's actually going a little bit quicker than I thought it would. But like I said, this is kind of like a, uh, almost kind of like a default or a starter site here. So I'm gonna close that. Now it's installing the plugins. All right. And now it's created the site. And it even gives us instructions on how we can get started here. So it just tells us to CD into, or, yeah, Jack's node site. So we'll CD into that. I'm gonna go ahead and launch Visual Studio. So you can see there's the, the site. And to run this, we're gonna say Gatsby developer, npm run develop. So that's starting up here. And I'm gonna open up the source here while that's doing. I'm gonna to go to, here's our homepage. And we can see here that there's a set of links here that's uh, supplying this data. And then it has a congratulations here. So I'm gonna open up this page. And here's our page. So there's that congratulations that we saw right there. So let me come back here the Visual Studio code. And I'm just gonna move that over here so we can see that. And I can say, congratulations. That's node, hit save. And we see it just automatically added that right there. And so, uh, Pretty simple uh, to go through here and start, you know, changing things and seeing it. Uh, those changes happen in real time. Uh, so that's the kind of example of a of a very quick and dirty down dirty uh, starter site. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and kill that. And now I want to do uh, uh, show you how we can add uh, do a WordPress site here. So let me come out of here and let's move that. And while we're removing that site, uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring up this uh, WordPress uh, local application. And this is a very handy tool if you're working with WordPress, uh, because you can come here, you can add uh, WordPress sites uh, and just run them locally, test them locally. It has uh, all this, everything set up with the database and with the uh, uh, with the web server and Nginx and all that. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to hit uh, start site, and I'm going to open up the uh, admin here. All right. So here is our, our WordPress site. Uh, I don't have a lot of content in here. This is an example. I just have this one hello world uh, Jacks node here. But one thing that I did do ahead of time is I installed some plugins. So I already have uh, WP Gatsby and WP GraphQL 
uh, already installed in here. So if I want to come over here and load up their uh, graphical IDE as an example, we should see in the schema explorer over here on the left that it's got all of the uh, it's got all this WordPress stuff in here. So now that that's running, uh, the next thing I want to do is I actually want to uh, create a new Gatsby site that's going to be able to pull from that site. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say Gatsby new. And I already have this, uh, uh, I tried this before. There's a, uh, I'm going to create a, a WordPress Gatsby site. And then uh, the second parameter in here after uh, the name of your site, you can actually link to uh, a Gatsby starter. So in this case, uh, there's a starter they've already created for working with WordPress. I'm just gonna use that just to show you how this works. And so I'm gonna go ahead and scaffold that out. And it's going through and it's creating site now. So these starters are normally pretty pretty quick to uh, pull down here. And once it finishes pulling down, I'm going to go into that. All right. Now it's adding Sharp. Doing the post install. All right. So let me CD into that. And this is pulling up the, uh, the site here. And the thing I'm going to go to first here is this Gatsby config. And this is where we have the plugins and everything set up here. And you can see right now, they have this defaulted to this uh, WordPress engine demo. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and run that first so we can see what that looks like. So let me come over here. I'm gonna do Gatsby develop. And this may break, so I don't know if I... No, I think this should work, all right. It's getting the Gatsby uh, source WordPress in here. You can see it's pulling down uh, menus, uh, pages, and it's doing its build here. The development bundle. And let's go to And here's WordPress blog. So you can see there's a bunch of stuff in here that they already have set up where they're already using uh, uh, that uh, content here. But uh, I have my own WordPress uh, site we just pulled up here. And this is Gatsby local. So I'm just gonna copy this. I'm gonna go here into Visual Studio code and I'm gonna paste that in here. And I don't need two HTTPs. All right. So now I've got the new source here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here, kill the development server, rerun it. Come back here.
And what did I break? Cash that local GraphQL. I do believe I'm running that. Let's try opening up the site. Do GraphQL just to test that. And it looks like uh, it is running. Let me come back here. Let me try doing that again. And it failed again, that's interesting. Oh, I know what the problem is. There's no self-signing certificate. Let me try that one more time. So I'm not running TLS uh, on the local. So there, now I can come back. And let's see if I need to manually update this. I think it should come up on its own, but we'll find out. All right. Let me hit refresh there. And now it's pouring to my WordPress site where I've got my one post here. And it even has a picture of me there. So very, and this, this is a kind of a very simple example here of how you can connect. Um, but, you know, the thing that's, uh, that's really cool about uh, Gatsby uh, and Gatsby develop is I can just come over here, to localhost 8000 and I can say underscore 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 GraphQL. And all of this WordPress content now, uh, I can go through here while I'm doing my development and just go through here and just start uh, taking a look at all these different, uh, I shouldn't have any of that in there. And I can just come through here, I'll just pull back an ID from all the uh, WordPress categories. Uh, let's see here, name, run that. So you can see very easily, you know, how quickly you can just go through and just start uh, playing around with the queries to get the data that you need. Uh, it's nice and nice and simple um, for, for working with GraphQL and, uh, and, um, and Gatsby. So that concludes the demo. Uh, are there any questions related to the stuff I was talking about tonight? No. Nope, okay, that's good. Um, so I was just gonna say, you know, one of the things that I also did uh, with the, using the source plugins, um, if you go into, if we go to gatsbyjs.org, oh, or .com, uh, one of the things I can do here is, uh, if I want to take a look at, let's say, some of the different plugins and stuff that are that are being used, uh, let me go to learn. Uh, do, 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 see here, references, guide. Uh, they actually have really good documentation on their uh, on their site. Uh, and that's the one thing that's been kind of interesting to, to see is how this, uh, this company is, uh, it's a company now, it's not just a framework, um, and how, you know, they've really done a pretty good job of going through and documenting all these different features and stuff like that. Let me see if I can't pull up, let's see here, community. So here are some of the plugins here. So one of the things I was looking to do with one of the websites I had, I have a, a YouTube channel and I was looking for a way to very simply kind of like create a set of pages based off of some of these different YouTube videos and stuff that I've done. So one of the things you can do here is you can type in YouTube 
is an example here. And you can see right here, well, here's this uh, Gatsby source YouTube plugin. And so as an example here, if I come here to the poly engineer.com website, I can go over here and I can uh, add this uh, videos page I can go to. And what it's actually doing is it's actually going through and it's querying that data at build time to pull back all the different uh, YouTube videos. And I can come through and I can page through this. Uh, and that's one of the things that I, I absolutely love about Gatsby is that there's all these plugins and stuff that are already written for you for, for doing, you know, things that, you know, that might have been a chore. So for instance, like if you're trying to do stuff with uh, SEO and uh, social media as an example, there's an SEO plugin that you can use in component. Um, obviously you can use all the React components as well. So if there's built-in stuff uh, you wanna use with React, you can use that. Uh, React Helmet's an example of that. Um, some of the other things that I, I thought were really handy was uh, they have stuff built in for, for doing site maps. Um, they also have a RSS feed. So if anybody out there still using RSS readers as an example, uh, there's an RSS feed that I have off of my website as an example. Uh, there's a plugin for Google Analytics. It's like, you name it, there's a plugin that's been written for what it is you're trying to do. And so that's the thing that I, I really like a lot about uh, Gatsby is that uh, they've made it you know, really easy to, you know, to add on functionality to your, your website. And uh, even if you're trying to do some stuff where you have some interactivity example, like uh, I think a lot of people have like a contact page or something like that that they have on their, on their website as an example. Um, so if you're using something like Netlify, uh, there's, uh, they've got functionality built into Netlify right now where you can do uh, posts uh, to Netlify and it will basically keep track of that and send you an email notification every, some, every time somebody tries to contact you as an example. So there's lots of uh, functionality like that that's, uh, uh, that you can very easily add just using plugins. So here are some of the resources that, uh, that I've used uh, that I thought were pretty good. Um, there's the gatsbyjs.com website, uh, which obviously has all the documentation. Uh, one of the people that works for, um, for Gatsby is this fellow by the name of Jason uh, Lingstorf. And uh, he has a channel on YouTube called Learn With Jason. It's pretty cool where he sits down with different, you know, uh, either content experts or people that are looking to learn uh, and for like an hour and a half at a time. And like, if somebody wants to add, let's say search into their website, or they want to add like OAuth logins, an example like that, he'll sit down with somebody for like an hour and a half and they'll figure out how to get that to work with Gatsby. So that's an excellent uh, channel. Uh, there's also a Gatsby JS channel. So they just recently, when they launched Gatsby 3.0, I guess a couple of weeks ago or whatever, um, they did a uh, conference, like a live conference, uh, obviously all online because of the pandemic. Uh, but they took all of the presentations they did and they posted them on their, on their uh, YouTube channel. And so that's also a, a good resource. So I've got that, I've got that in here as well. So uh, typically what I do, uh, I finish up these, uh, 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 these uh, presentations and stuff is I take the, the slides and the uh, source code or whatever, and I just put those up on uh, under our meetup site. The uh, meetup site obviously is down for right now. Uh, once it's back up, uh, I'm gonna post these uh, slides and stuff up there. So if uh, you guys wanna go back and take a look at, uh, at this, you'll be able to do that. Uh, any other questions before we uh, say good night? Nope. nope. All right. Well, thanks uh, gentlemen for, for coming out uh, tonight. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to meet in person here pretty soon. Uh, Cross our fingers. Um, with that, uh, have a uh, have a nice evening. Thanks. Thanks as well. All right.